so uh, how the rbcs are being formed uh, there is protection for uh, protection you need gland is the bone marrow and failure of it we discussed aplastic anemia when it is infiltrated with so many bushes and stones and other things it is bone marrow infiltration by malignancy and granulomas and you need next a man um, that drive uh, to build the house that is the erythropoietin and in chronic kidney diseases that will be and also in anemia of chronic disorders this erythropoietin will be deficient and the materials you need to build the house like bricks stone etc it's the iron b12 and folic acid and blood loss anemia a disaster something from here flooding that is uh, that also we discussed acute and chronic blood loss we discussed so today about this iron b12 and folate deficiency first iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disorders so what is this this is a case scenario uh, this is very important because many of us sleep when we are listening to something no that means we have to high time we have to check our hemoglobin because of tiredness lassitude that is the first symptom a patient of anemia um, has develops and what is this there is epigastric pain and endoscopy shows a small growth here and this person has got stomach pain and he is waiting for pile surgery so these all these patients are losing blood chronically not acute blood loss a small small amount of blood is being lost in the motion okay in the stools because of that um, there is erythropoietin stimulation marrow is trying to work more produce more rbc but at the same time the nutrients are deficient more so the iron uh, that's why the patient ends up with iron deficiency anemia lassitude etc so the objectives are pathogenesis of iron deficiency iron metabolism iron deficiency in blood and bone marrow and pathogenesis and blood picture of anemia of chronic disorders so for iron deficiency b12 and folate deficiency this picture you must remember this is the basics so in erythropoiesis this is the primitive cell pro normoblast this is the net product that is the rbc mature rbc what we see in the peripheral blood this is the primitive um, um, rbc primitive erythroid precursor that is present in the bone marrow and this pro normoblast so from here to here uh, what are the changes you can see one of you can tell me three changes from this cell to this cell Now, uh, don't look at all this in what happens three changes one of you can unmute and tell how is the cell size of the cell? of the cell decreases ma'am very good second this new what is this uh, uh, new disappears cytoplasm is what is the color blue ah this this is red ma'am ah red or pink okay mm. then nuclear size decreases ma'am is there any nucleus in the rbc no nucleus is lost okay this is the pale area okay not nucleus huh? so these are the three changes that occur this you must remember 
Now, cell size decreases, cytoplasm from blue to pink, and nucleus is lost. So, what happens in between? So, see the cytoplasm as blue. Again, blue cell size is decreasing. And here, can you see a little bit of color variation? And this is becoming bluish and violet. And then a little more pinkish. And then the mature RBC. So, this is a basophilic normoblast, polychromatophilic normoblast. So, here the hemoglobin is being present. Okay. And orthochromatic normoblast, so hemoglobin is being formed. And this is a reticulocyte. Few of them we see in the peripheral blood. The rest is present in the bone marrow. So here, in the remnants of that uh, product, the nuclear product, RNA will be present as reticulum. Uh, but we won't be able to see it in the peripheral blood with the Leishman stain. Once you do a supravital stain, you have to stain the blood, not the smear. When you stain the blood with crystal violet, and these reticulums are, um, uh, like structures are stained and we will be able to appreciate it. I will be showing you in hemolytic anemias. Okay, after that mature RBC. So why the blue color is becoming pink? Because of hemoglobin acquisition. Hemoglobin is being formed. Next is what happens to the nucleus. See here, small white white dots, large nucleus, open chromatin. So here the nucleus becomes condensed. Condensed means it's tightening. And here again it's condensed, small condensed, and it is thrown away. Okay, no nucleus in the RBC. So DNA maturation occurs. Here, the DNA maturation occurs, but that is why the condensation and finally the nucleus is being thrown out. So, these two things, once the D nucleus is being condensed, the cell size becomes smaller. Okay? So, cell size decreases, cytoplasm ratio increases. So, here less cytoplasm, large nucleus. But as the cell matures, cytoplasm ratio increases, nucleus size decreases and finally disappears. Cytoplasm staining changes from blue to pinkish red. Then chromatin, that is this because of that. Okay. So here you remember cytoplasmic maturation is by hemoglobin formation. And nuclear maturation is by DNA maturation. Okay. So this is what? Hemocytoblast, proerythroblast, early erythroblast, later here hemoglobin is being formed. Then the nucleus is thrown out. And this is the reticulocytes with small threads within it and the RBC. So what is iron deficiency anemia? Anemia due to deficiency of iron. So this is the commonest nutritional deficiency throughout the world. Not only in developing countries, it's throughout the world. The causes of it may be different in developed countries and in developing countries. In developing countries, it's most commonly nutrition, nutritional deficiency. Whereas in developed countries, it may be due to ulcers, piles, all those Things. Then daily in a diet intake is 10 to 20 milligram of iron and absorption is 1 milligram. So how much iron what we eat 10 milligram and 1 milligram is only absorbed. That means 10% is only absorbed. So sources this details I won't go into because you would have read in many from school time onwards. You, must, you remember there is a heme iron that is uh, ferrous and non-heme iron ferric. So non-heme iron is present in all vegetarian food and heme iron is present in all non-vegetarian food 
and that is ferrous and this contains ferric okay and all the details you read this is important how is that absorption of iron occurs so here what is this one of you tell me what is this area and what is this what is this cell duodenal what is this luminal surface okay are you awake you are able to hear me one of you tell me i don't know no whether you are uh, i i uh, okay what is this this brush, brush border, border man ah brush border this is the lumen okay so in the lumen whatever we eat iron containing foods either in the ferrous form or in the ferric form so what happens is see here the ferric form is converted to ferrous form okay uh, then it is being absorbed so during absorption this is the eric surface so dimetallo protein is also involved in that okay dimetallo transferase um through that it is being absorbed and here within the duodenum uh, intestinal cell or duodenal cell within the cells it is being stored the iron just stays like that very thin okay uh, this is a low molecular weight iron pool and it is stored in the form of ferritin so here one you must think uh, ferrous iron is present in which one vegetarian or non vegetarian non vegetarian food so that is absorbed more commonly and the ferrous one very quick so that is why the non that that uh, non vegetarian foods are more uh, effective in iron deficiency anemia the ferric has to be converted to ferrous before absorption and cytochrome b oxidase that enzyme is also uh, necessary for its absorption a conversion for its conversion then in within the cell it is stored as ferritin in case if it is not entering the blood what happens to this luminal cells respiratory tract or the gi tract or urinary tract all the lining epithelium what will happen shedding of the epithelial cells ah, very good very good so when this cell is being shed this ferritin is also lost okay so uh, how is it being absorbed well this is the basolateral surface and how is it being here is the circulation so here we need the festin um, is there that is essential for the conversion along with copper the conversion of ferrous iron to ferric iron okay for the conversion and like that it is and here you have the ferroprotein ferroprotein is also present this is essential for the absorption so the, what happens is there is one substance called hepcidin so this hepcidin inhibits the ferroprotein okay so um, because of that uh, this um, when our hepcidin ferroprotein copper hepcidin all has to work in balance for absorption of the iron into the not absorption for transferring this iron into the circulation so in copper deficiency can you name one condition 
Wilson's disease, ma'am. Yeah, very good. There they get what anemia and deficiency kind of anemia will be present. Okay. So here what happens is um, hepcidin. What does hepcidin do? It inhibits spheropotein function in the macrophage. So this hepcidin will reduce the transfer. Ferroprotein helps in transfer and this hepcidin inhibits the ferroprotein. So when hepcidin is high, what will happen? Ferroprotein is inhibited and this ion cannot be transferred to the circulation. Okay, this we will be dealing with in chronic anemia of chronic disorders. This hepastin helps in this conversion of ferrous to ferric ion. So what are the things you remember? Initially it is absorbed in ferrous form and in the circulation this ferrous is converted to ferric. And the storage form within the cell is ferritin. Okay, hepcidin is an important one that controls the ferroportin which helps in a transfer of iron from the cell to the circulation. So here, this is the diet, uh, either ferric or ferrous, in the stomach with hydrochloric acid, ionization occurs. So remember this, then you will be able to write what are the etiology causes. Okay. So stomach is essential for first diet is needed, second stomach is needed because hydrochloric acid is essential for ionization of iron, what we eat, then small intestine, iron is absorbed by an active transport mechanism, what we saw. Uh, in the previous slide into the mucosal cell. So you need a perfect small intestine. Then in the mucosal cell, it combines with ferritin. That is the storage form we saw. And then it is transported with plasma transferrin. This plasma transferrin is called iron binding capacity. Total Iron binding capacity, other name, we call it like that. Plasma transferring, remember, iron and this beta 1 globulin that is transported as total iron binding capacity. So then you need bone marrow, it, most of the iron goes to the bone marrow for hemoglobin, majority hemoglobin synthesis in the form of ferric. And some amount for uh, is stored as ferritin, hemosiderin, and some of them is uh, utilized for enzymes like cytochrome B, and uh, a minimum amount for myoglobin that is present in the muscle. And when this RBC lysis after its lifespan of 120 days, this hemoglobin comes out and it splits up to form bilirubin. All that you must have read in physiology. So distribution of iron, I am not uh, going into the detail. So bone marrow contains the majority of it. Uh, then um, a small amount is stored in the liver. Uh, after muscle needs about uh, minimum of it for the myoglobin and some amount for the cytochrome B oxidase enzyme. So this is the iron cycle, daily diet absorption, transported along with transferrin, and daily loss will be 1 to 2 milligrams. So here see, absorption is 1 to 2 milligram iron per day, uh, the loss is 1 to 2 milligram iron per day. So because of that, Whenever there is deficiency, this cannot be balanced and absorption will be increased. And though it is increased, after some time, the iron deficiency anemia sets in. Okay? So, everything should be balanced. The storage form is ferritin. 
majority utilized for hemoglobin synthesis or erythropoiesis. What is the pathogenesis of it, um, iron deficiency anemia? Etiology causes. So remember, first, what did we see? Diet. So inadequate dietary intake due to poor economic condition or anorexia. What is anorexia? Lack of hunger, ma'am. Ah, loss of appetite. So diet. Okay, two things. One is there is no food, not a nutritious food. Second is not um, no appetite, not eating. Second, what do you need? Stomach, small intestine. All that is needed. Okay. So, impaired intestinal absorption and because partial or total stomach is being removed, half or full. Then, achlorhydria. We need hydrochloric acid for ionization. Mall absorption. In the GI path, you will be reading about mall absorption syndromes. So, in the, the mucosal cells are not, uh, there is pathology in the mucosa. So, the absorption will not occur properly. We call it mall absorption syndrome. So, remember in this way, you need not mug the first diet, the second is absorption. Then, so what are the things needed for absorption? Stomach is needed for hydrochloric acid. So, if stomach is removed, partial or total. Second, if there is gastritis, hydrochloric acid is not secreted, then ionization cannot happen. That is called achlorhydria. Then, intestine, there, there uh, only the absorption occurs. So, that um, there is a mall absorption syndrome. So absorption is not present. So what are the things? Uh, this you must remember. Many people, uh, iron, when you take iron, oral iron, it is a irritant to the stomach. Uh, so because of that, uh, many prescriptions contain antacid also, like uh, Rantac or Delusil, something like that. And uh, we have to tell the patient uh, to take iron, uh, I mean, and acid before food and iron after food. That is half an hour and acid, half an hour before food and after food they have to take iron. Otherwise, if they take together, there is no use. Again, that should be taken with water, not with milk. Milk will impair absorption. Then pancreatic secretion, lot of legumes that will retard and also tomatoes will cause impair absorption. Whereas vitamin C containing foods and sugars and hydrochloric acid, all these will increase the intestine ion absorption. Next is third is increased requirement. Okay. Because we said 1 to 2 milligram is absorbed daily, 1 to 2 milligram is um, lost daily. Uh, uh, but some conditions require more, like 7 to 20 milligram per day is required. When growth spurts, whenever the patient child is growing, sudden growth. Pre, like teenage, all that. Premature children require more. Then pregnancy, lactation, they require more. And chronic blood loss. The chronic blood loss, already I told you, but during blood loss and also microcytic hypochromic anemia you get. This you cannot remember. You just imagine your GID initially. So in GIT, what all you get? That's why it is ulcer, malignancy. So you initially esophageal varices. In the esophagus, in the anastomotic site, between the cyst pota systemic area, there are a dilatation and rupture. So esophageal varices. Second is peptic ulcer or malignancy. Okay, stomach over. Esophagus, stomach over. Then intestine. 
hookworm infestation and glioblastoma infection. Then you come down hemorrhoids, like piles, okay. And in females, it is the uterine bleeding. And this ulcerative colitis is again with the skin. And in the kidney, it is a small stone that is lying and causing one, one drop of blood in the urine each time. Two drops, three drops. The, it goes unnoticed, okay. So what are the common age groups where iron deficiency and anemia sets in? Females in the reproductive period because of the heavy menstrual drops and because of the um, intrauterine devices. Then repeated abortions. Then they have anorexia, loss of appetite, lower economic status, increased demand during pregnancy, delivery, lactation, that time nutritional deficiency. Postmenopausal female, it is bleeding per vagina and bleeding from GIT. In infants and children uh, between 1 to 2 years, because the iron store at birth is very less, and when the child is premature, also the iron store will be very, very less. And breast milk contains less iron. And cow milk, though it contains more iron, the availability, bioavailability is poor. And improper weaning. By three months, six months, when they wean, they have to supplement proper food. Otherwise, they go in for iron deficiency. And always remember in your practice, when an adult male gets iron deficiency anemia, they, you have to investigate for some pathology in any of the tracts like GIT, mainly GIT, colon malignancy or stomach. Okay, you have to search for that because it is very, very uncommon in adult males. In the elderly people, poor diet, poor dentition. And in the teenagers, all of your favorite uh, like junk food, no? mm, that will cause iron deficiency anemia. So here you see anemia pathogenesis. Where does iron deficiency anemia starts? At the polychromatophilic state. Okay. At the polychromatophilic state itself, the, it, there is delay. Okay, it should be pink, that pinkish blue that is not there. So the iron is being formed, hemoglobin is formed less amount. Okay, it starts here. Megaloblastic anemia from here. I'll tell you this. This is not. So clinical features, of course, you know, weakness, fatigue, dyspnea on exertion, palpitation, because the heart tries to beat fast, unusual dietary cravings, like, like uh, they eat sand, mud, all those things, paler of the skin, mucous membranes, sclera, antenna, chest pain, cardiac failure, then menorrhagia in women, that will add up to the anemia more. Then epithelial changes. Nails will show spoon shaped nails. Tongue shows atrophic glossite, smooth uh, tongue. Then in the mouth, at both the ends of the mouth, there will be ulcers that are called angular stomatitis. In the esophagus, there may be a thin membrane that is being formed called Plummer Vincent syndrome. Next, we have to investigate the patient. So, what are the investigations you do? RBC indices. So, RBC count will be reduced, hemoglobin is reduced, ECV reduced, MCV, MCH, MCHC all reduced, reticulocyte count is reduced, and WBC and platelets are wrong. Here you have to remember in iron deficiency anemia. RBC count is always low. Okay. So blood smear. See here. This is a lymphocyte. Small lymphocyte. The RBC should be of the size of little smaller than the nucleus of the 
small lymphocyte almost similar to the size of the small lymphocyte nucleus but here you see all the cells are very small and they vary in size okay they are not similar this is little bit this is very small this is again small very very small like that so we call it they vary in size and isocytosis and shape also varies some of them will be there is no hemoglobin so the size cannot be maintained so they maintain a pencil shape so poikilocytosis the cells are microcytic hypochromic so what are the two anemias where you get microcytic hypochromic picture one of you please tell what are the two things hemoglobin contains two parts no what are the two parts one of you please what are the two parts are you there are you hearing yes ma'am heme plus ah. globin heme and globin okay heme contains Iron. Of iron. Yeah, yes. mainly iron so uh, so uh, iron deficiency anemia globin deficiency is thalassemia yeah very good so microcytic hypochromic anemia uh, you have iron deficiency and thalassemia now i told you in iron deficiency there is anisopoikilocytosis remember when i take uh, thalassemia i last and rbc count is always reduced these two points you have to remember no polychromasia because reticulocytes are reduced and nucleated rbcs we don't see wbc and platelets are normal and in the bone marrow it is hypercellular why hypercellular because erythropoietin there is anoxia tissue oxygenation is less because of that erythropoietin is stimulated erythro uh, secreted more and erythropoietin stimulates the bone marrow to produce more rbc so erythroid hyperplasia all the cells are erythroid these are all uh, early normoblasts okay la precursor cells okay here this is a abnormal cell the nucleus is not proper because of the fast production so when the, there is more hyperplasia and lot of cells are formed there is no iron so all these cells are deficient the cell should have a pink new uh, cytoplasm but it is having a blue because there is no hemoglobin so it is a micro normoblastic maturation delayed hemoglobinization iron stores are absent all this you have to remember there is delayed hemoglobinization so nuclear maturation is delayed or cytoplasmic maturation is delayed which one is delayed i showed the first slide Which one is delayed? One of you, please tell. Cytoplasmic. 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 Very good. So, and myelopoiesis. That is, WBC is formed normally. Megakaryocytes, platelets are formed normally. And biochemistry. I am not going to the detail. Serum iron is reduced. Storage form is reduced. Transferrin. What is transferrin? Iron binding. So then. iron is reduced iron binding will be elevated because it is free okay there is no iron to bind it so this is elevated and 
par firing is also elevated. Other test hemoglobin electrophoresis this is to differentiate it from thalassemia. Osmotic fragility is reduced. Uh, when I take hemolytic anemia, I'll teach about that. Then uh, red cell distribution with this elevated. That is because of the cell size varies the red cell distribution size. So this is a normal RBC histogram. It should fall in the side between 80 and 100. In microcytic hypochromic anemia, the curve will be shifted to the left. Okay, here, 36, etc. So this is uh, how the histogram looks like. And anemia of chronic disorders, there is decreased RBC production. What are the chronic disorders? Chronic microbial infections like tuberculosis, okay, leprosy, all this. The, like um, small pneumonia means pneumococcus will be there and within two weeks, or three weeks, the patient becomes normal. But tuberculosis, leprosy, all these are chronic disorders that go on for many, a long time. Like chronic immune disorders, like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, systemic, all these will go on for a long time. Neoplasms, like lymphomas, all these. Cancer, breast, lung, etc. So these are the chronic disorders. So in these patients, what kind of anemia you get? Anemia of chronic disorders. There is decreased RBC production, decreased proliferation of erythroid progenitors, and impaired iron utilization. Remember, in iron deficiency anemia, iron is not there. There is scarcity of iron. But in anemia of chronic disorders, there is plenty of iron. But iron couldn't be used for erythropoiesis. Okay? The impaired iron utilization. There will be lot of macrophage iron stores. Hemosiderin, ferritin, all that. So here, see, dietary iron absorption Whereas then there is chronic blood loss will, uh, will lead on to iron deficiency anemia. But here you see the hepcidin. This hepcidin is secreted in large amount in chronic inflammation. Why? Because it is said interleukin 6 stimulate hepcidin. So when interleukin-6, uh, it is a cytokine, that will uh, stimulate hepcidin and large amount of hepcidin is being secreted. That will cause ferroprotein, negative feedback. It will inhibit the ferroprotein. So uh, from the endrocyte or the mucosal cell, the uh, intestinal cell, the ferritin cannot under the circulation. Same way from the macrophage uh, that is stored in the liver or in the bone marrow, this ion cannot enter the circulation. Once it is free, once it enters the circulation only, it can enter the bone marrow to be effective. So here it is sequestered. Stored form will be present as such. So main culprit is hepcidin that is being increased because of the interleukin. That is one thing. So there is, uh, though iron is present, available, iron stores are available, that is not available for utilization for erythropoiesis. You all understood? Second thing is, there is erythropoietin in chronic disorders that uh, erythropoietin secretion is also reduced.
because of that again the erythropoiesis is reduced this is anemia of chronic disorder so all storage form is present but it is not utilized the mainly in inflammation interleukin 6 inhibition of erythroid precursors interference with action of erythropoietin this interleukin secrete more acidin so it inhibits iron absorption and it inhibits macrophage iron sequestration and erythropoiesis is inhibited and that causes anemia of chronic disorders so this already i told you acidin is also called the defense they say that it is secreted as a protective mechanism because the bacteria needs iron so it is not letting the iron come out that is another theory so hematologic features anemia is mild it can be normocytic normochromic or microcytic hypochromic the differentiating from iron deficiency is there is plenty of iron stores and serum ferritin is increased tibc is decreased these are the three things that differentiate from iron deficiency increased or increased serum ferritin decreased tibc and few questions what is trichoma can you find out for the next class what is plummer vinson syndrome why pyloneia or iron sequestration in chronic disease so this is pyloneia spoon shaped and who is this anybody this is pica they eat mud sand other things and plummer vinson syndrome is a web is being formed in the esophagus because of epithelial dystrophy and uh, this person has got anorexia nervosa she vomits everything queen um, diana uh, princess diana so she ends up iron deficiency anemia okay and uh, i think you all had a test to know internal yes, as uh, so you are all tired megaloblastic anemia will take in another class and many people have left also they must be tired okay what do you say okay ma'am ah uh, we will take it in the next class okay so this uh, to summarize iron deficiency is due to deficient iron intake impaired absorption increased requirement and chronic blood loss more common disease worldwide and highly prevalent in developing countries complete blood count with iron stores and biochemistry will help in diagnosis differential diagnosis of anemia of chronic disorders and thalassemia anemia of chronic disorders is mainly due to increased hepcidin and decreased erythropoietin so you uh, tell me uh, this question i asked last class anybody found out 2 liters ma'am ha uh, 2 uh, liters i think yeah one third okay not 2 liters one third blood loss will end up in instant areas okay so this is megaloblastic anemia we'll do it in the next class okay bye thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am bye thank you ma'am yeah thank you bye bye